Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jennifer Holmes. I'm Dean of the School of Economic, Political, and Policy Sciences here at UT Dallas, and I'm being joined by our Associate Dean, Dr. Do Young Kim. So we'll walk you through a few things. So we're really excited to have you join us here, and we're looking forward to having you in the on campus in the fall. So let me tell you a few things about EPS. First of all, you know, one of the best things is we're a small school in a big university, so you get all the best resources that you would have, the, an expansive alumni uh, network, but you have access to the dean, the associate dean, all your faculty. It's a very close-knit school and a, and a much more intimate experience in EPS. We're also in one of the fastest growing metroplexes in the country. Um, in fact, you know, Dallas has more people, the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex has more people than the state of Minnesota where I came from. So it's really quite dynamic and a pretty pretty fun place to, to live and work. And we have a tradition of teaching excellence. We have a lot of award winners and you'll see some of them later on. So just a quick review of all the master's degrees. You know this since you've uh, you've been accepted to one of them. But I think one thing I will just say is what's really special about EPS is that you can take certificates in some of the different master's programs. So even if you're a criminology master's student, for example, you can do a certificate in GIS or you know lots of these different data analytics uh, certificates in, fit in all of these degrees. So there's a lot of overlap um, and different skill sets that you can borrow from one of these master's degrees and apply to another. And if you have the inclination to study abroad, we have two dual degree programs, one in, in Phillips University in Marburg, Germany, which is an international political economy. So if you're an IPE student, that you might want to consider doing this. It's not too late. And if you're an SDAR student, we have an excellent new program with NCHU in Taichung, Taiwan. It's a wonderful place. I, it's actually one of my new favorites. I'm looking forward to going back there in, in December of this year. But it's a wonderful place to be. It's not nearly as crowded as Taiwan or Taipei, but it's a lot of fun and excellent food. And the classes are in English in both these, both these programs. We also have uh, several multidisciplinary curriculums uh, across multiple graduate degrees and programs in our school. For instance, sustainability, which is a really important topic, uh, are covered by multiple programs. We have GIS, International Political Economy, Public Policy and Polit uh, Political uh, Economy, and Public Affairs. Also, global and public health topics can be studied as specialization in many programs, such as PhD in Public Policy and Political Economy and other programs. Actually, I myself have been actively involved in these two topics for past past 20 years. So we do have six doctoral programs and most of the doctoral graduates have had uh, almost perfect job placements in academia, governments, think tank and industry and many other um, area of, the, uh, of expertise. Six of our graduate degrees are STEM designated, including four masters and two doctoral degrees, including uh, two our new master's degrees, uh, social data analytics and research, and cybersecurity technology and policy. If you are not familiar with the STEM, STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. This field offers a fastest growing professional career opportunities for both domestic and international students, but in particular, the eligible international students may obtain a 24 month OPT, optic, optional practical time, practice time extension. So for uh, up to three years of uh, work opportunities in the United States. So as doc, uh, Dr. Holmes already mentioned, we also do have a number of graduate certificate programs. So these certificate program serves as a great gateway to advanced degrees, both master's and doctoral programs in new, innovative, and multidisciplinary areas 
in response to the market needs. For instance, the, our newest certificates, special data science and in international banking and monetary systems, got a lot of attention from both our prospective students as well as our existing students. So we have a number of scholarship and fellowship opportunities dedicated to only to our students. So each award is at least $1,000 and as much as $5,000 or more. So every year we award 40 to 50 students who apply for these competitive opportunities. Uh, but um, sort of whenever you apply with the uh, strong case, and you uh, there is a good chance that you can get uh, one of these awards. And you know, before I talk about the Archer Scholarship, we do have one new scholarship program that's available to everyone except the students in cybersecurity policy and technology. But new entering master's students will all get $2,000 per semester. It's automatic for new master's and self-funded doctoral students next fall. We're really excited about it. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do an application. It just is automatically credited to your account. So we're really excited about that. It really makes us a, a, a good deal. It's kind of an experiment at the university, so we're really excited about it. And have you, you all be our first inaugural class of recipients of this new scholarship. All right, well, another thing I wanna to talk to you about is the Archer Center. So anyone in, in the more policy side can, can apply to be an Archer Fellow. That's really impactful for, for students who want to be in DC and have an experience working for the federal government or in a think tank and really embedding themselves in DC. It's a fantastic way if you wanna launch your career on the East Coast of doing an Archer program, making a network of connections there in, in Washington, DC, and then moving on. It's a fantastic program, it involves housing and programming and a lot of networks that are open to our students. So we're really excited about the, the Archer Fellowship. So we have a lot of excellence that we're excited to tell you about, that's for sure. We have some quite a few award winners and rankings. So let's talk rankings because students always love rankings. You know, our, our PhD programs are all well ranked. Um, you know, we have like PA, Public Affairs is the number one in, in North Texas. GIS is ranked very highly nationwide. And our other programs like Criminology, all of them are ranked top 100 in US News and World Reports. We're really excited about that. We also have some pretty innovative research centers. So our students have access to the, the Federal Statistical uh, Research Data Center. That's in, really important for research. So any doctoral students on the call or any master students who wanna do some interesting research where you can look at census data and all the government data that links to census, you can access that at this, this new research center at the Dallas Fed. There's a, there's a process of getting it, but it's a really incredible resource for our students. We also have a number of research groups like our geospatial health research group that's headed by our own Dr. Kim right here on the call. We have the Institute for Urban Policy Research that's led by Dr. Bray, and that is about to launch a brand new initiative of quality of life research. So we have the William Short Survey that's actually in the field right now. We're about to launch that. So it's going to have a lot of interesting opportunities for students to play with geolocated data in the metroplex of, of areas of, of issues of top concern to citizens, policymakers, and the top industry power, really power players in the region. So we're excited about that. Anyone interested in any aspect of education policy, there's a lot of great research at the Texas Schools Project. This is really unique because it follows every single student in the state of Texas that from their the first time they take a test all the way through employment. So you can see how did kids from this school do it? If they changed a principal, did that impact out, uh, outcomes? It's really exciting research projects there. And then of course we have the Education Research Center that's involved with the TSP. So a lot of interesting research going on here at, in EPS at UTD. 
And of course, as I said, excellence. You know, we have a lot of teaching award winners. We're really proud of it. And we just had a couple of new presidents teaching excellent award winners. Dr. Kim was one who was one of the best for online and blended instruction, and Dr. Meghna Sabaral for graduate and professional instruction. These are just a couple of our recent award winners. So we are more proud of uh, ha having five ROTA winners, which is a Region Outstanding Teaching Award, um, uh, including our dean here, the most pre prestigious <laughs> teaching award selected and offered by UT system. Um, I believe Dean Holmes got this award back in 2011, and also another associate dean of graduate education, uh, uh, undergraduate education, Dennis Boots, got this award in 2009. Also, our faculty received various prestigious awards from many research and professional organizations, also serves many committees nationally and also internationally. Here are some of our recent faculty uh, members who uh, were recognized by their research and services and, and also their long time um, commitment to the various organizations in, uh, in the nation and also international. Uh, activities. All right, well, it looks like it's time for some questions. Let's see what we've got. Oh boy, uh, Dr. Kim, one, one student wants to know as a full-time worker, what options do they have? Um, so we do of course, we do have uh, many part-time students who are seeking our certificates, also master's uh, degree, and even doctoral degrees as well. Um, so most of our graduate courses offer at 4 p.m. or 7 p.m. Uh, to serve those students who work full time. So I do have a lot of the part time students also even even sometimes full time you can take uh, multiple courses in kind of multiple nights uh, classes. So we try our best to offer uh, those endless core cl classes in the evening time and also some of our courses become more online. So you can also take the online courses to to uh, meet all your course requirements. Yeah, I mean, all those grad classes are either four or seven. There's nothing earlier for for graduate students, and we're really trying to get more at seven, as Dr. Kim says. So let's see. Another person asked, what's the process to get involved in research? I'd say just start, right? The best way to do is to talk to some of your faculty, see what they're working on, um, get involved, look at some of those centers or research groups that I mentioned. And we have some more, more faculty creating some other research groups. You know, we've got a conflict research group. We've got a whole lot of other things going on. So I think it's just talk to your faculty and see what you can do to get involved. Our faculty do a lot of publishing with, with students and with graduate students, so there are lots of opportunities. Yes, I probably 80% of my publication are working with the, the graduate students or sometimes even undergraduate students. So uh, just reach out to the faculty who share the similar interest uh, with you, what you have, then I, they're more than happy to uh, work with you and then give you some direction and guideline. Well, I know one student asked, are there any online courses? And you just answered that. I will say, I know GIS is, is moving to offer more online courses, PM are offering them in many different modalities. So it really varies by the program, but we definitely do offer some online courses. Let's see, then we've got a question about assistance with funding if interested in the IPE Marbury program. Absolutely, that counts for our $2,000 automatic EP scholarship. And uh, I think I, yeah, that's. I think that's the way we'd, we'd start with that. That's an excellent one for anyone who's a new student this year. And how about you take the last one, Dr. Kim? What can I do with a master's in social data analytics and research? So yeah, social data analysis research, also three-year uh, master's program. And then, um, so basically the question is about the, the basic placements of those uh, the people who got that degree, right? So the most of our the the, uh, the graduate with that master's degree uh, got a job in um, think tank and governments is more like a data analyst job. So we actually recently had an event and by inviting um, 
our recent alumni, and then they share a lot of experiences. So as you know that the, these days, there are a lot, of, a lot of program out there and like learning, machine learnings and big data analytics and, and several different um, sort of AI based discipline. But our uh, degree is uh, somewhat special because we know that uh, some, so, some social scientists may not have a very strong background in computer engineering or, or data analytics, but, but we really train our students as a more like more uh, friendly to the social scientists. So we uh, create our curriculums to be more specialized in, in the social data, like a text data or social security data, crime data, uh, health data. So so you can actually uh, get trained with the, the different sort of aspect of social data, and then you get uh, can easily find a job. And also we do offer some internships and working with our local industry partners or government partners. So you get trained and there's some experiences, and then um, they may uh, hire you as a data analyst or researchers. All right, I'll take the next one. I, we have one student who asked the options of funding available for students offered admission, but not funding. I assume that's a doctoral student. Um, I would say, you know, we have offers out right now to all our spots. Uh, sometimes we have TA positions become available closer in. So I say stay involved, but also, you know, if you are able to start, you do get that, that, that scholarship. Uh, but sometimes when we have students who are unfunded, but we bring in um, when faculty bring in grants, they can get picked up off grants and they have the possibility of, of earning a funded spot later as a PhD student. Now let's see, oh, how does fast tracking into a PhD program work? Um, that one, there's no fast tracking into a PhD program, but we do have undergraduates fast tracking into a master's program. Um, but if, you if you're in a master's, program and you want to apply for a PhD program, you can certainly do that. And a lot of your master's credits will count toward progress on your doctoral degree. The rule is um, it's a little complicated, but you can double count a class. So you can count it once for your master's degree and once for a doctoral degree, or you can count it for a master's degree and a certificate, but you can't count it three times. So we can we can work our magic and really help students you know, maximize their, I guess, degrees and how efficient they can be in taking classes, but we can't count a class in more than two spots. Okay, let's keep going and I'm sure we'll get some more class, we'll get some more questions in a minute. Uh, I'll tell you about life on campus. Uh, you know, there's a lot of construction going on and a lot of things going on, but we do have a pretty vibrant student life. We have some graduate student organizations, and these are ones that we really encourage. Um, so there's GIS, criminology, the, the cybersecurity students have, a, have a, a, an organization. And I tell you what, they just got money, $15,000. So we'll have 15 $1,000 scholarships that will be competitively, competitively awarded. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna award those to second year students. So, so that students who come into the program as a first year, you might not have any funding, but you can compete. And then if, you know, we'll give that to the best students who apply in that second year funding. So we're really excited about that, that uh, club that has a lot of interaction with practitioners, which is very good for our students, but also they're giving us uh, support for scholarships, which is great. Our students also are involved. There's a lot of community service and we have, of course, the General Student Assembly. So lots of student life on, on that side. We also have some pretty fun things going in. So if you're into the arts, just as a as a you know as an enjoyment we have a new Athenaeum that's being built and a new museum that is going to open in late August early September this fall so we'll have the Crow Museum of Asian Art it's going to be open on campus really fun place with a lot of you know great public spaces outside and meeting spaces inside it's just going to be a real addition to campus life and then we'll keep going with an athenaeum afterwards so we're just going to have more and more cultural things on campus as resources for our students to relax enjoy just a little personal enrichment as you're getting your education so housing course, might be 
yeah, go, and the most important decision. Go ahead, decision. sorry, Dr. Kim. Uh, <laughs> yes, so various on-campus and off-campus housing options are available for our students, and many of the, them are newly built. And that's uh, actually benefit of the uh, joining the new university. We are relatively young baby university. So of course, you may need to act a little quickly as some of the newer housings could fill up soon, but we do have uh, many uh, sort of options, like for example, north side. So maybe next slide, we, you can actually see um, a some picture of our um, sort of the newly built um, sort of off campus housing, but right across our campus. So north side and also we recently had the north side plus is our newest smart technology enabled apartment just across our campus. It offers various room types, amenities, sports activities, and lively campus town type of environments. And many of our students are living here and are fully satisfied with their living arrangements. And then they, of course, the first couple of years, and even during COVID, a little kind of um, not really lively, but right now is a really kind of fully packed and bars and everything is a really kind of good environment for a, our incoming students. Transportation is also important. So Dallas is known for a DART rail system and currently it has four lines, red, blue, green, and orange. But the, we got the new line, silver line is going to open soon, uh, hopefully next year. So it will stop at the UT Dallas station and that connects from all the way from the East Plano area down to the DFW airport. So yeah, even if you don't have uh, look, your private car and you can take the the this dart rail and the, from airports of course there are like uber is uh, pretty common and zip car and then there are but uh, a lot of the um, transportation resources even if you don't do not have your own car immediately So several times during the semester, we host several events to encourage and engage our students. For example, earlier this year, the SLENS is a pop dance rock groups perform at our university theaters, and then a lot of our students actually join and enjoy uh, those events. Also, occasionally our leadership team uh, serve breakfast taco or popcorns to our students, cheer them up during the exam time. And every program also offers their own program level mixer and the welcome events orientation for and particularly for our incoming students. So, for example, uh, during this summer, typically in August, we uh, are now preparing a lot of orientation and, and welcome mixer events at the school level, also program level. So you will get a lot of information, also have a good opportunity to mingle with the other students and then get a lot of important information. Uh, also tips about the your uh, your school. All right, so let's see. We've got a few more questions. Uh, one student asked if they have a TA ship, are they also eligible to apply for other scholarships? So I'll give that one to you, Dr. Kim, since you chair that committee. Sure. So the some of the uh, scholarship and the fellowship opportunity is that I share, of course, except for $2,000 for the master's and unfunded doctor students, you are not eligible as a TA, but for other scholarships like the uh, $1,000 or maybe $2,000 scholarship, yes, you will be eligible. But it's competitive, you need to actually apply the summit the application by the deadline. Then, then we actually have a school level committee to review all the application. So we have about maybe 40 spots and then more than 100 application every year. So yeah, there, there's a, a little bit of the competition, but yeah, you will be eligible to get that, uh, the additional scholarship on top of your the TA ships. Excellent. Oh, I've got here, I got another one. Sorry, I was looking at something else. Okay, so one, we have a question about how inclusive an environment we have. We we actually, the whole school is, you know, we, we are a Southern school and we try to be welcoming. I think that's the best way to say it. We've got an incredibly diverse student body. Um, we, we're number 17 in the country for the most, the highest number of international students. 
um, you know, we, we've got traditional diversity on top of it. I know we have been consistently rated as a most welcoming place for LBGTQ plus students. Um, it's definitely a welcoming and inclusive environment. And, uh, I, you know, you'll, you'll find that to be true as soon as you're on campus. See, we have some more admitted doctoral students about funding opportunities. I think those questions should all go to the DGSs of your, your director of graduate studies for that particular program. And this one, I'm going to let you have this last one, Dr. Kim. Other than finding a great job after finishing the program, what impact does a master's in social data analytics and research make for betterment of society? That's very interesting questions. Of course, the um, you will um, you cannot really imagine how fast this society is is growing in terms of the uh, more data driven decision making. Also, uh, wherever you go, you may be asked to to um, see if you are able to handle some data set, and then how can you really improve your organizations every everyday decision making based on the data because we were actually this society is just filled with a lot of data sets so as i mentioned uh you can just because of that kind of demand in the market or in your potential employers then you will uh, increase your chance of being uh being hired by your future employers but also on your personal lives and you in your personal career uh path i think you can enjoy being more adaptive to this like AI based society. I always teach my students in my global health class, economics class, public policy classes about like what can uh, what can we do in the new environment and competing robots and AI, like like whether what is our new um, sort of uh, way of addressing sort of the data based like chat GPT type of things like our philosophy of writing something our philosophy of analyzing something may be fairly different from the, maybe even 10 years ago so I don't know whether this can answer to you but maybe we need more time to, to discuss about this topic well all, all I can say is I believe in data-driven public policy and and our SDAR students are certainly poised to contribute to that conversation all right, let's go on and then we maybe have a few more chats for chances for uh, last minute questions. All right, careers. Let's talk about careers. You know, we have a lot of career fairs. We have public service careers. We have all sorts of targeted careers, career fairs. We bring in employers. We have a lot of full time opportunities advertised in internships to UT Dallas students. Career Services has many, many services for students. We have uh, access, all students have access to something called Quincia, which is really interesting. And that gives you, it allows you to build your resume and get feedback, just how it looks. It catches typos. It gives you feedback on you need to have quantitative metrics. So you can really show how you achieved you know, your goals in a previous position. Um, that is interesting. So you can do that and go to career services. It also has um, kind of practice practice sessions if you're going to do a virtual interview. And sometimes some places use higher views and it's this kind of awful AI <laughs> assisted um, interviews where you sit in front of your computer. Well, you can practice with Quincia. So there's all these tools you can do at home before you go to career services to really get you ahead. So we're very excited about that. Uh, but we have a lot of alumni who are working for the government, businesses, nonprofit sectors, and we're bringing them in to give you all specialized advice. So we are trying to communicate with the external society and communities via several different outlets, social media, newsletter, blogs, conferences, speaker series, and webinars. Ironically, actually, many of these um, sort of the initiative were born during COVID because we were stuck and not really actually communicating during those pandemic, but we actually uh, you utilize this as a really good opportunity to communicate and that this is what we are doing and this is why you are contributing uh, using our resources. 
And also we recently hired a new social media staff and who is a really good at and communicating all these uh, achievements or all or, or, or our our contribution uh, to our prospective students, also to our potential employers and then our um, stakeholders, partners. So I think we've done a pretty good job in communicating. Oh, you got to talk about your grow series. Don't forget yes, that's your next grow slide. series. That's the next slide. Yes. Oh, OK, so, sorry. <laughs> so uh, so for instance, like grow, uh, which is stand for graduate readiness and orientation and workshop. Um, actually, we invite a lot of renowned speakers to share their experiences, expertise with our graduate students with various topics like job market, grant writing, dissertation writing, federal jobs and, and so on. So recently, for example, this semester we had an international career coaching webinar and especially for the cyber uh, policy people and by uh, in, uh, inviting uh, some international career, co career coach. And so this coming Friday, we will have another one uh, with the topic of how to find a job at Think Tank because we have a, a couple of faculty who had a, uh, extensive experience in, in Think Tank. So they are going to share a lot of experiences in, in um, sort of with our students who are interested in, in these job positions. And we're always bringing people in. I mean, we have just brought in three federal agents and, and federal hiring. This is just one thing. We have a big public service push in the school. Uh, so we had a DEA agent, an FBI agent. We had She's five or six agencies represented just last Friday with the federal executive board and off uh, and people from the Office of Personnel Management. So we're always bringing people in uh, to talk to students, really give them that targeted advice to help them get ready when they're done and ready to launch. All right, let's see if we have any final questions. New posts, there we go. Oh, advice would you give to those who are new to the DFW area? Come hungry. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a great, such a great area. Um, you know, I think Dallas is a driving town. So if you, if you like to drive, it's a great place. Campus does have bus service for those who aren't as, as comfortable driving and will soon have that, that dart, but it's an amazing place to explore. I will say the shopping's good. The airport's amazing. We've got big howdy. So anyone who's arriving from an international location, please get connected with them because Big Howdy, they'll actually pick you up at the airport. They have, uh, you know, furniture they can help you with. It's really an amazing program. So that's good. But Dallas is, there's just, there's everything you could want. Do you want to add anything to it, Dr. Kim? I know I, when I recruited him, I showed him our multiple H Marts and, and Korea towns that we have. It's really an yes. amazing city. Yeah, we do have uh, not only a Korean town, but also Chinatown and also a lot of Indian communities. And like we, I think you can find like sort of no matter where you come and then you can find out that you are authentic, genuine restaurants of, of your uh, your background. Uh, maybe temperature wise or summer a little a little hot, but I think <laughs> except for the summertime, I think they were pretty comfortable and then there is no like a big snows and then maybe kind of like lockdown with the a lot of the disaster kind of type of weather, but you are pretty uh, weather is pretty pleasant except for a little bit of the um, hot summer. But other than that, I think every everything come pretty convenient. We are really um, like metropolitan area, but it's not really like really super crowded like New York or LA. So we're pretty um, I think good and comfortable town. Oh, and I'll just mention one thing before I go to the next question is Dallas has one of the country's best arts districts. So we've got the symphony, we've got the opera, we've got, you know, these great playhouses. Um, so the art scene is very strong here. Um, so that's, it's pretty exciting. And of course, you know, we've got sports. Uh, I don't like the Cowboys, so I'm not going to talk about them, but we've got the, you know, great baseball. Everyone loves the Texas Rangers. We've got hockey. We've got soccer. It's really a fun place to live. Oh, we have one question. How long does it take to complete a master's in cybersecurity technology and policy? That's easy. Two years if you're full time. We only start in the fall, so it's a pretty regimented path. But if you are full time and start in the fall, you will be done in, in two years if you follow follow the advising. 
let's see, we've got another question there. More clarification on scholarships and graduate assistances. Graduate, so any of the TAs, all those questions should go to your DGS, but any new student, if they're an unfunded doctoral student or any new master's student other than cyber will automatically get that EP scholarship, which is great. No application required. Uh, let's see, got a question on summer classes, pre-program sessions on research writing and data analytic tools. Dr. Kim, I'm gonna send that to you. That's the perfect one for you. So pre-training opportunities? Yes, and summer classes. Sure. Um, we actually the in the typically in the fall we um, offer um, two different type of uh, method sequence. Uh, the six thousand level class is the more algebra based uh, statistics, and then seven thousand level is more calculus based statistics. But we found the some um, some students in some discipline do not have a strong background in math or coding, so we I think that it's important to provide some background training or or some resources before they actually start their four semesters. We are going to offer a coding camp and math camp uh, like first time ever this summer in August, a two day math camp and three day coding camp to all the incoming graduate students and then we also offer free lunch uh, for for those five days then then we are um sort of strongly encouraged to join those camp and then to get trained of course you may have some experiences but this is a good opportunity to refresh um yourself with the, the all the new coding skills and math skills then you can actually take even seven thousand of course you have a choice to uh uh, choose either 6,000 or 7,000, but I think you can uh, probably after those those camps and then you can actually even uh, take challenge in, in taking 7,000 level because we do actually offer, as I already mentioned, in our STAR uh, programs and also some of our doctoral program like econ, GIS, also P public policy programs, we really um, encourage our students to take really state of art big data based courses like text sec, text analysis and then machine learnings and 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 data uh, visualization all those courses really needs to have a strong math and, and stat background so if you take the eg uh, probably kind of version of the statistics you may not be able to take more like advanced level courses so we that's why we are offering this math and coding camp and then once you get more acquainted with this the math based or coding based uh, courses that i think there are lots of opportunity up lots of courses available to take to, throughout throughout your uh, program period excellent well i am excited to see you all here in the fall i think maybe can the dean join the coding camp dr kim Sure, you're I might need you're to brush up some of my skills. It's never a bad, bad idea. That's what it's designed for. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I think we are out of out of questions, probably out of time. We're really excited that y'all joined us and we are looking forward to seeing you in the fall or at the coding camps before. Look forward to seeing you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us.